An absolutely stellar Thursday evening here on the farm. Pitcher perfect playing conditions at Stanford for a big time women's college soccer matchup. The eighth ranked Penn State Nittany Lions in town to face the 12th ranked Stanford Cardinal. Good evening, everyone. Troy Clarity here. So glad that you have decided to be a part of this match. And if you're staying up back on the East Coast, Thanks for staying up late here with us. Well, Stanford has had seven different goal scorers this year. This young lady isn't one of them yet. Andrea Kitahata, a big time weapon. Second team all Pac-12 last year, can serve it up and score it herself. But last week she just got back from Costa Rica and the under 20 Women's World Cup where she played for Team USA. Played 27 minutes against San Francisco last week. 45 minutes against UCSB on Sunday. Does she crack the 11 today? We'll find out in just a few moments. Well, hey, wait a minute. That face looks familiar. It's two-time Pac-12 Forward of the Year, Penelope Hawking, only this time she's in a Penn State uniform. Hawking, a grad transfer from USC, where she left as that program's all-time leading scorer. Super quick, super dynamic, super skilled, and super competitive. One of the big-time finishers in this sport. Different jersey, but she is still very much one of the most dangerous threats in the game today. Well, both of these teams know what it's like to win national championships, and both of these teams would love to make an early statement on a national level tonight. Penn State, Stanford, straight ahead. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business in 1929, he relied on four important values. Freshness, quality, variety, and service. I'm proud to carry on his legacy, but from a bigger space. We still freshly roast, season, and dip delicious nuts here in New Jersey and deliver them with the freshest dried fruits, snacks, and sweets to families that love our products all around the country, including mine. We think you'll love Nuts.com too, so check us out and enjoy free shipping on your first order. Da Vinci is on a mission and we need you to stand up. Stand up for the environment. Stand up for each other. And stand up for the future. This season, we've selected a range of shows that put kindness first. So you can tune in, join the crew, and proudly call yourself one of the kind. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Being isolated and lonely can be harmful to your health, resulting in high blood pressure, a greater risk of heart disease, and early onset dementia. So it's important to build and maintain social connections. Try a new hobby, volunteer, exercise, or use your phone or other device to stay in touch. Visit connecttoeffect.org to find resources and ways to stay connected. This message is brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Pac-12 Women's Soccer is brought to you by Clean Simple Eats. Eat clean, keep it simple, get results. Stanford campus is buzzing with a high-octane women's soccer matchup tonight. The eighth-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions in town to face the 12th-ranked Stanford Cardinal. Coaches and 11s for both squads, starting with Penn State, their longtime head coach Erica Dambach in her 16th year running the show for Penn State. We talked about Penelope Hawking, but Ali Schlegel, no slouch either. Peyton Linehan, so many weapons for this Penn State lineup, and they play very good defense as well. Much of the same could be said for Stanford, too, to this point. They're 3-0 on the season. Here's their head coach, the man in the black shirt, off to the right side. His name is Paul Ratcliffe, of course, in his 20th year at the helm. 
Maya Doms is the stir, is the is the stir the, 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 the straw that stirs the drink. Easy for me to say, but watch out for Elise Evans, a fantastic true freshman center back who has been big time so far in the early going this season. Andrea Kitahada not cracking the 11, but I'm sure that we will see her at some point in this match. The Cardinal and the Nittany Lions. Away we go. Enjoy the match. Samantha Williams immediately gets called for the bump on Ellie Wheeler. Penn State 3-0-1 on the season, ranked number eight. They've won three in a row after getting a tie against Georgetown, the 19th-ranked Hoyas, back on August the 18th. That was a 2-2 final. Penn State has gotten in gear with wins over Duquesne, 21st-ranked West Virginia, and then knocking off Monmouth on Sunday. That was a 2-1 final. Penn State beat Monmouth in the NCAAs last year. Doms doesn't get a clean hit on the strike on the far side. Kennedy Wesley sent towards Amy Sayer. Calls to Natalie Wilson. Now Julia Leontini getting her first start of the season. Stomping on a dime, Maddie Myers turns. There's Elise Evans' first touch of the day. Another miss by Maya Doms. And that falls out of bounds. Stanford 3-0 on the season. Wins over Sacramento State at the University of San Francisco and against UC Santa Barbara. That was a 5-1 final on Sunday. And Stanford hasn't had too many problems finding the back of the net so far. Samantha Williams, certainly one who can do that with regularity, but that is handled with composure. Devin Olive getting that one out of dangerous ground. Avani Brandt. Brandt and Evans, a terrific center back tandem to this point for Stanford. And again, Evans, a true freshman. Paul Ratcliffe, three matches in, told me he knew that, that the squad had depth before the regular season began, but he didn't know that he had quality too. And he has to make a lot of decisions every time he sits down and figures out who's going to start and who's going to get playing time. And that is a a problem that, that all coaches love to have, including Erica Dombach, who's in, in pretty much the same boat for Penn State. As that falls to Corey Dyke. Dyke, the senior from Littleton, Colorado, but she has Bay Area ties. Corey was born in Los Gatos, just down the road. Doms. Miscommunication. Dyke trying to find Penelope Hawking, which is never a bad idea. Rolls to Ryan Campbell, the junior keeper from Laguna Beach, California. Campbell in her first year as the starting keeper for the Cardinal. No relation to Jane Campbell, who did so many wonderful things for Stanford in the middle part of the last decade. Here's Abby Grubel. Outside, Sierra Engie. Engie centers towards Williams. Skips off a couple of blue shirts. Rubel in pursuit. And a corner kick coming up for the Cardinal. Stanford and Penn State have met six times in the history of this series. Stanford's won five of them. The lone win for Penn State came in 2015. And they've met a couple times in the NCAA tournament. In fact, the last time these two teams met was right here on this pitch in the 2019 NCAA tournament in the third round. Stanford won that one 2-0. Penn State only got off one shot all day. High, bending towards Wesley. Doms with the bicycle attempt, and Asman's able to smother it. Catherine Asman able to get there in time and make the save as Maya Doms hunting for goals as usual. Doms, the senior from Davis, California. All Pac-12 first team last year. Pac-12 all freshman team in 2019. And she's the one in the middle who makes it all go. Has a bit of a fiery streak, too. She told the Stanford Daily, look, I have a pretty short fuse, but I just care a lot. But has been finally able to get there before it across the goal line. The throw in. Hawking versus Elise Evans. Boy, that could be a dynamite matchup all night. 
The flick towards Hawking's direction from Ali Schlegel, but it's broken up by the Cardinal. Doms has Sayre outside. Sayre at top speed. Cassie Hyatt gets there first. And just watches it fall beyond the back line. Penn State with the goal kick. I asked Erica Dombach, the Penn State head coach, what she senses the biggest strength of her team is right now and what her squad's biggest question mark is at this point. She said, well, depth and experience. That's the biggest strength, but she also said it's the biggest question mark, too. Depth and experience is the biggest strength and that, and that she has it, but it's also the biggest question mark in how to utilize it and to get the right combinations of folks out there at the right times. So both Dombach and Ratcliffe struggling with with similar, similar things right now. Outside Peyton Linehan. Skipped away by Avani Brandt. Throw in for Penn State. But again, those are, those are problems that every coach would love to have. When you have more quality players than you can put on the pitch at any given time. Linehan, Brandt, cleared up by Wesley. Williams in hot pursuit takes a spill. Williams and Wheeler both fighting to get to the ball. And Wheeler gets called for the foul. Samantha Williams, junior from Laguna Beach, tied for the team lead for Stanford with three goals. She shares that with Amy Sayer. Seven different Stanford players have scored. Three different Stanford players have braces this season. Just mentioned two of them, Sayer and Williams. Lumi Kostmeyer, another one. Kostmeyer, a freshman who has three goals as well for Stanford this year. So it's a three-way tie atop the, the goal-scoring category for the Cardinal. There's Samantha Williams. But Lumi Kostmeyer, a freshman from Connecticut, she bumped into the UC Santa Barbara goalkeeper in the 17th minute on Sunday and left the game after that. She's fine. She wanted to go back in, but Paul Radcliffe says, no, no, if I put you back in the game, then you're going to miss a week of training. So we need you. Evans shields off the ball and allows Campbell to keep it. So Kostmeyer is fine and is available to play here today, but she starts this one in reserve, which is where Stanford has done the bulk of its, of its scoring work. Engi finds a way out. Brandt had to shield off Peyton Linehan, who was lurking in the distance. Actually, not lurking in the distance. She was right there. Here's Doms weaving. Outside, Paige Rubenstein. Rubenstein, no. Nope. Knocked away, Natalie Wilson had an easy collection for Catherine Asman. Graduate student from Roswell, Georgia, earned her degree in supply chain and information systems back in May. So congrats to her on that. <laughs> Off the redirect. Hawking right there. And a goal kick coming up for Stanford. Well, one game played earlier here today, Stanford men's soccer beating UC Davis 3-0, and Stanford getting its third goal of the day on a redirect off of a, off of a drop kick from the UC Davis goalie. Just bounced right off of Leighton Purchase for Stanford and back into the goal. Not quite so fortuitous for Penn State in that situation. Grubel at top speed, as is Maddie Myers. Goal kick. Well, let's take you into the time machine back a couple hours or so, back to that third goal for Stanford. Leighton Purchase just put his shoulder into it, and the backup keeper for UC Davis, all he could do is just watch it go into the goal. Soccer's a fickle sport. Sometimes you're in the right place at the right time, and things like that happen. 
So the Stanford men, a 3-0 win over UC Davis this afternoon. They're 3-0 on the season. Collision, Wesley and Schlegel. Schlegel makes sure that Kennedy Wesley's okay. Wesley's tough, played with a broken nose last year. Sayer. Leontini, she can strike. And the whistle comes just outside the 18. Yes. The free kick to be placed just outside the box. Leontini, the junior from Danville, California, scored against Sacramento State and Stanford's opener. Scored last year off of a free kick against Cal, against, can't call them Cal State Northridge anymore. They're CSUN now. Got to get the branding right. It's always important. A look behind the cage. About 23 yards out. Sayer and Grubel. Grubel doesn't make it through the wall. And that one sent well out of the park and into the eucalyptus curtain. It was Avani Brandt who tried to put that one on frame. Abby Grubel, the graduate student, Santa Ana, California. Began last year with a three-game scoring streak. She put one in the back of the net against the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos on Sunday. Paul Ratcliffe says she just takes people on and scores. That's a good thing. Allie Schlegel, her trademark pink headband. Settled well. Aiming for Williams. Asman gets there first. <laughs> Williams on the Pac-12 All-Freshman team in 2020. Just such a hard worker, but so much skill to go along with it. I've seen her do this on multiple occasions, can beat multiple defenders by herself. Back to Campbell. Plays with her foot to Brandt. Skips it to Engie. And the Cardinal able to work together. Wesley. Grubel. Behind Wesley, but Dom's there to clean it up. Chased by Corey Dyke. And out of bounds. <laughs> Stanford to throw it in. Wesley gets it back. Sayer spins. Leontini poked forward, doesn't get past. A side swipe flick. Williams fighting. Penn State keeping it. Stein absorbs it. It's going to be a big battle in the midfield. I think we've already seen that here tonight. Dom's back to Evans. Falls to Kate Wiesner. Wiesner, a senior from Monrovia, California. She actually scored against Stanford in 2019, the season opener that year. That was the first goal of her career in her first game. So that 2019 season for Penn State began and ended with matches against the Cardinals. Good crowd on hand here at Kagan Stadium. Watching top flight women's college soccer. It's about as good as it gets, especially here at this time of year. We've already seen some terrific interconference matchups throughout the early going in the season. Heck, we've seen a couple tonight. Ahead to Schlegel. Schlegel trying to hang on to it. The shot wide of the net. 
Kate Wiesner had a chance at it, but she was hounded by a Stanford defender and couldn't get off a clean shot. Setting up the first corner kick for Penn State tonight. Penn State, number six, Kate Wiesner. And Wiesner needing a moment. Officials going over to sure she's okay let's take a look and see if we can pick out what the issue could be and maybe get stepped on perhaps not knees that's never pleasant but Wiesner okay and setting things up for the corner kick <laughs> left foot Skips off of Williams. A clear attempt by Brandt doesn't quite go through, but it's Grubel who handles it. Bouncing back to Maddie Myers. And Stanford trying to go the other way. Bit of contact and jostling. And that's what Samantha Williams can do. Blocking the corner kick on the baseline and then sprinting top speed and then trying to lead the charge for the Cardinal at the other end. And getting the foul. Outstanding stuff as she redirected the attempt to play it four by Maddie Myers and, and, and Myers just simply harassed her all the way down the field. Yellow card shown against Penn State. Penn State number 10, Maddie Myers. So Myers into the book. Asman's view. Doms. Not quite. Well, one thing that's true about Stanford women's soccer, especially on set pieces, they get terrific service. As Abby Grubel putting that one in the air, finding Doms in traffic. Doms going, ah, man, just missed on that one. Just over 15 minutes into this one, scoreless between Stanford and Penn State. And a substitution for the Nittany Lions. And let's see what happens here. Amelia White, the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, coming in for Peyton Linehan. Amelia White, the Big Ten co-freshman of the week last week with two assists in the first two games of the season. But she is absolutely electric. Has the ball poked away from her by Leontini on her first attempt. Sent forward towards Doms. Stops, reassesses, weaves through, but eventually comes to White. Missed Hawking. So right now on the pitch, you have the top two recruits from the class of 2022, according to topdrawersoccer.com. Elise Evans, the Stanford cornerback, center back rather, she was number one. Amelia White, number two. The number three recruit in the class of 2022 is also in the building. She plays for Stanford. Ali Montoya, a forward for the Cardinal, and I'm pretty sure that we'll see her at some point. Schlegel turns, finds Wiesner. Wiesner with Elise Evans closing and forcing the corner. Elise Evans, the freshman from Redwood City, California, just a few miles up the road, the reigning Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of California. Fifth generation Stanford athlete, her mom, Dina, a soccer player, also in track and field. Her dad, Marlon, played football for the Cardinals. Matter of fact, I watched Marlon take a kickback against the Oregon Ducks for a big touchdown back in 1995 up at Dotson Stadium. So if I watched Marlon play for Stanford, now I'm watching his daughter play for Stanford. That makes me very old. Far post bounces off and sent away Evans. 
somehow that snuck off and caromed off the front post. Williams switching, but nobody there. Falls out of bounds. Boy, let's take it. Take another look at this one. I thought two white shirts had a chance to, to clear it at first, and they did. Got past Grubel and somehow bounced off the post. Hawking throws it in. Gets it back from Schlegel. Penn State will throw it in again. Over to the far side to White. White versus Wesley. Wesley the shield. And forces the goal kick. Well done by Kennedy Wesley. Boy, Amelia White, Erica Dombach, the Penn State head coach, says you just, you just hold your breath whenever she gets the ball. She's absolutely breathtaking. World-class acceleration, deceleration, and change of direction. Leontini, Penn State pressuring. And Schlegel swiping it back. Now a free ball. Dom sent hurtling towards the midfield stripe. We play on. Williams to Grubel with Sayer in front of everyone. Rubel hangs on, shoots, knocked over the crossbar. Don't fault the idea, Grubel taking a crack at it, testing Catherine Asman. As the Cardinal trying to build, they weave their way through the Penn State midfield, which is not easy. Grubel beat one, let loose, but Asman up to the challenge. Corner kick, Stanford. Number 24, Abby Grubel. Has been able to climb the ladder. Corner kick handled by Grubel. Doms close. Sent back. Elise Evans in the mix. Leontini comes in. Cleared out. Natalie Wilson handles that. High spinner. Engie. Williams waits to try to get a little bit of room. Wheeler beats her to it. Skips off of Engie for a moment. Now Schlegel gets going. Sayer the challenge. And a late whistle. When kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. From complex treatments to long hospital stays, these special patients miss out on the things that most kids take for granted and let kids be kids. That's where Starlight Children's Foundation comes in. Since 1982, Starlight Children's Foundation has transformed the in-hospital experience for more than 17 million seriously ill kids in 800 children's hospitals and facilities across the United States. Our state-of-the-art programs like Starlight Virtual Reality, Starlight Hospital Wear, and Starlight Gaming let kids just be kids, if even for a few moments. Whether donning an action figure gown instead of standard hospital issue, or settling into gamer mode, if it brings a smile, a laugh, or just a break from their reality, it's happiness delivered. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. 
Penn State starts it off. Wheeler keeping it. Now veering inside. White showed for the ball. Wheeler tried to find her. Evans. And Campbell just lets it roll to her. Both of these teams similar with their depth and their quality of depth and experience. Both of the, these teams also similar in trying to get back after a fairly tough 2021 campaign. Stanford 13-6 and 1. Fourth place in the Pac-12, lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. A lot of teams would, would love to have that kind of record, but Paul Radcliffe says for us around here, yeah, it's, it's solid, but it's kind of an average year compared to, compared to our standards. Meanwhile, for Penn State last year, they went 12-8-1, finished sixth in the Big Ten. They went to the NCAAs as well, but lost to South Carolina in the Sweet 16 after knocking off USC in L.A. along the way. Erica Dombach said, Look, we just had too many injuries, especially on the back line. Broken up by Doms. And you can't win championships if your defenders aren't healthy. Leontini. Leontini off the crossbar. Leontini almost. We told you earlier in the show she can strike. And that one almost cashed in. Out to Wesley. Hawking and Brent locked up. Those two, of course, have, have seen plenty of each other. Boy, Julia Leontini, inches, centimeters. And we need to take another look at just how close this comes. First, a terrific ball, the one-timer. And maybe Asman just got a couple fingertips on it to redirect it. Free kick for Penn State. Chip towards the top of the 18. Wilson with Hawking in the mix. Campbell came off her line, but realized she had help from Evans. In the air, off of Schlegel, but bounces easily to Campbell. Boy, Ali Schlegel, well decorated. All Big Ten second team last year. Has scored in three of the first four games of the year. Had a goal against Arizona in this stadium in the second round of the 2019 NCAAs. What a game that was. Went to overtime. Williams in pursuit. Asman gets it. Arizona and Penn State played here in the second round of the NCAAs in 2019. A game that was decided in overtime by, frankly, Taglia Ferry, who won that game in dramatic fashion. Penn State's slogan that season was empty the tank. And boy, did they, they do that against Arizona that day. Sam Coffey, boy, she, I remember right, she came off the bench in that match and just absolutely changed the game. Made big plays for Penn State down the stretch. But maybe the tank was a bit too empty for Penn State, and they just didn't have enough against Stanford a couple days later. 
Substitutions for the Cardinal, including Jasmine Ike and Lumi Kostmeyer, who has worn number 29 the first three matches, but now she is at number 33, along with Andrea Kitahata. So Stanford shifting things up, especially up front, off of hockey. Told you about Kita Hada at the start of the show, the sophomore from Hillsboro, California. Hasn't scored yet, but she's been coming off the bench now in the last three matches. Missed the opener against Sacramento State because she was with Team USA at the Under-20 Women's World Cup down in Costa Rica. As we cycle through the substitutions, Ike, another fantastic freshman for Stanford. Also on the pitch for the Cardinal. Ruby Kostmeyer is in for Stanford as well. Kostmeyer gives Stanford some size. Trying to find Kostmeyer. Redirect. Can anyone get there? Penn State can. And the foul called in the box on Stanford. There's Lumi, freshman from Southbury, Connecticut, had two goals and an assist against the University of San Francisco last week. Brings a different pace to the game. Maybe the one of the better illustrations of that this year was in a game that didn't count in the standings. Exhibition between Stanford and the Chinese national team on Sunday of last week. Great match. Stanford won at 1-0. Maya Doms in the 86th minute, but... We're serving up a top 25 showdown. The number 12 ranked Stanford Cardinal take on number one Texas Sunday at one on Pac-12 Network. Veterans, did you lose your job due to the COVID-19 pandemic? The Veteran Rapid Retraining Assistance Program is a short-term VA program that offers education and training for high demand jobs. These jobs provide higher starting wages and require less time for education and training. The sooner you apply, the sooner you can start on your new path. You served your country. Let VA serve you. Apply today. For more information, visit va.gov slash VRRAP. I can't imagine life without him. You love me, don't you? I'm entering the darkness. <laughs> time to face my fears. It was horrific. This family was seen as untouchable. There's no doubt that he would decide that this had been a rigged election. I think I treat people well unless they don't treat me well, in which case you go to war. Good news, Sling Nation. Football is back and you're in the perfect place to get your fix of the action. To celebrate the return of football, we've partnered with Vizio to give one of you the ultimate viewing experience by giving away a 75-inch TV, soundbar, and one year of sling. Entering couldn't be easier. Scan this QR code, follow us on Instagram, and like this post. That's it. You're now in with a chance to win. Be a winner this football season with sling. Kostmeyer, once she came on late in the first half, Stanford's attack really started to pick up the pace. So let's see what happens here with Montoya, Kostmeyer, and Kita Hada up front. Meanwhile, Schlegel and Hawking doing the work up front for Penn State. But nothing doing in that sequence. Stanford 3-0, off to a good start, and they have certainly done well putting the ball on the back of the net. We've hinted at this earlier in the show. Seven different players have scored, three different players with multi-goal games. That's, that's pretty impressive as well. And nine of the 13 goals that Stanford has scored so far this year have come from the reserves. Could that trend continue here, especially with Kita Hada and Kostmeyer and Montoya on the pitch? Oh, by the way, the top three recruits from Top Drawer Soccer's class of 2022 are on the pitch right now. 
And Evans and Montoya for Stanford and Amelia White for Penn State. So you're, you're looking at the future right now of women's soccer. Almost snuck that one to Schlegel. Here comes Kitahada. Nifty, nimble, and crafty with the ball. Trying to get her back in the groove after her stint with Team USA. And Paul Ratcliffe says, look, our, our starting 11 is pretty tough to crack. Engie. Montoya. Montoya. Outside, Kostmeyer has space and time. She lets go, and it's covered by Asman. And Asman telling the, telling the defense, hey, you need to tighten some things up out there a bit. Just over 30 minutes in, scoreless. Stanford and Penn State, Troy Clarity here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying this one. And so far, this... This match has probably gone about as you might have thought it would. Defensive minded, tough to find ways through both of these teams. And you would think that whoever scores in this one is going to earn it. Off of Hawking's foot, settled by White. White searches for options instead. Finds one in the white shirt, Rubenstein. Rubenstein coming forward. Stanford may be a bit late to start running there. Doms has it poked away, gets it back to Engie. Sends it near side towards Montoya. Rubenstein calls for it and gets it. Ike, freshman from Palo Alto. You can literally see Palo Alto from here, just across El Camino Real. Kostmeyer with Mika Scheiman centered. Nope. Asman beats Montoya to the ball. Montoya from Los Altos. Evans from Redwood City. Ike from Palo Alto. All three local products, highly reg regarded, highly recruited, all staying home and playing for Paul Radcliffe and the Stanford Cardinal. And all three of them are very familiar with each other from the Bay Area club soccer scene. There's Evans towards Montoya. Montoya chasing. Dogged pursuit finally cleared. Brant to Wesley. Can't link with Kitahata. Substitution coming in, Rachel Wasserman, a fifth-year senior from Dallas, Texas, coming in for, for Hawking. Wasserman had a goal against Georgetown in Penn State's season opener. Was the Dallas Morning News Player of the Year back in her high school career. A lot of talent in the Metroplex in girls' soccer. Long strike! This one hits the crossbar, too. Cam Montoya gets there. Yes, she can, but it's collected by Asman. Another missile from out of nowhere that finds the iron. Boy, and Stanford from long distance. That was Kostmeyer, who can also connect. Yeah. 
That's a good way to open up a goalie's eyes, knock a couple off the crossbar from long distance. Taken back by Engi. Wesley. Towards Montoya, overshoots her. Doms wasn't far behind either. <laughs> Throw in for Penn State. Schlegel surrounded. Wesley has to recover. Evans sends it forward. You can already see the, the calm, the composure from Evans. Potentially continuing a great tradition of center backs here at Stanford. In fact, the Cardinal have won the last five Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year awards. Tierna Davidson in 2017, Alana Cook in 2018, Kiki Pickett in 2020, and Naomi Gurma in 2019 and 2021. Doms comes out. Aki Uasa, a freshman from Charlotte, Vermont, coming into the match. Aki was calling for it. Evans tried to find her. Amelia White, far side, touch too hard. Wesley gets the better of that one. So far, White hasn't had that much room to operate. And it's been a little strong on her touches to this point. Let's see if, if that adjusts as, as this match goes along. Wasserman, chased by Montoya. Cassie Hyatt. Hyatt, a transfer from Texas Tech. Ike, ahead to Montoya. Montoya scores! Perfect ball to Ali Montoya, and she finishes. One, nil, Cardinal. Well, Stanford winning it back in the midfield, getting it to Jasmine Ike, and Ike just slotting it through ahead to Montoya. And Montoya says, thank you very much. One, nothing, Stanford. And Ali Montoya in the goal scoring category for her first time in her Cardinal career. I suspect there will be more from that young lady. She was actually thinking of going to UCLA at first, but then she got to know the Stanford team and the staff and she signed to play for the farm instead. And her parents actually played soccer down the road at Santa Clara. Another high level program, certainly on the women's side. In fact, Santa Clara will host Penn State later on this weekend. But Ali Montoya, the Bruins' loss is the Cardinals' gain. And Montoya puts Stanford ahead 1-0. It's already one of the top three recruits making her presence felt in this match. Evans has two. White may be a little bit of a struggle, but I, I certainly wouldn't count her out. Devin Olive in the match now for Penn State. Dyke to Olive. Cleaned up by Brandt. Chipped forward. Montoya trying to get there. Wheeler lets it fall out of bounds. So Montoya becomes the eighth different player to score for Stanford this year in three plus matches. And 
Stanford right now outscoring its opponents 14 to 1. That one goal coming late against UC Santa Barbara on Sunday on a, on a breakaway. It was really the only way that the Gauchos could, store, could score, just playing it over the top to their fastest player, and she was able to, to beat the Cardinal defense and, and, and put it on through for the goal. But that's it. That's all that the Cardinal have conceded to this point this season. Penn State tries a similar tactic, but Elise Evans has a different idea. Ike? In Kitahata's direction, but instead Penn State will throw it in. Now Stanford starting to lean a bit more. <laughs> Slid forward. Finding a way out of it. Waiting. Getting it out to Rubenstein who has a clear look at things. Tried to squeeze it forward, but no. Wesley, with less than five minutes to go first half. The hesitation after the pressure from Jordan Caniff before Evans finally lets it go. Caniff part of Penn State's number one ranked recruiting class for the 2019 season. As you had Caniff, you had Corey Dyke, you had Peyton Linehan, you had Kate Wiesner. They also added Sam Coffey, who transferred from Boston College that year. And talking to Erica Dombach, and she said that senior class lived up to the hype. In Kossmeyer's direction, and all Olivia Borgen can do is just send that one out of bounds. Four minutes to go, first half. Corner kick number three, forthcoming for Stanford. Montoya accepting the honors. Front post cleared away. And Stanford to throw it back in. So both Stanford and Penn State, so similar in so many different ways. They they recruit well, they have depth, they have quality, they have quantity, they've won championships, they have a couple of the, the best coaches in the business, a couple of the most respected programs in the sport, and they have played for big stakes all throughout. Look at that. It's a pretty neat resume for Stanford, no doubt. They have three national championships. Stanford, winners of two of the last five college cups. Penn State won it all in 2015. And in fact, if you stretch it back over the last 16 years, only two programs outside of the current Pac-12 and the ACC have won a national championship in the last 16 years. Santa Clara did it in 2020. They, of course, play in the West Coast Conference. And Penn State in 2015. Ellie Kirshner in the match for Penn State. Kirshner, a junior from Limerick, Pennsylvania. She has a goal this season. It came against Duquesne. Olive. One back by the Cardinal. Two minutes to go, first half. Nike turns and has space. White closing in on Wesley. 
Yuasa. Engie lets it roll. Evans fakes like she's going to keep it on the far side. Instead, plays it forward to Engie. Kitahada, give and go with Yuasa. Mika Scheiman plays it out. Scheiman, the sophomore from Berlin, was kind of shoved into the pool last year with all the injuries to the back line. She arrived in the USA and was starting for Penn State just three weeks later, but made the most of, of her opportunities and has already proven to be a, a stalwart along the back line for Penn State. She's also scored two goals along the way. Out of bounds, Stanford to throw it in, final minute, first half. Here's Mika who is the current Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Back to Evans. Less than 30 seconds to go. There's a shot on a hop right to Asman. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Asman holds on to it. Three, two, one. And the first half comes to a close. Stanford kept knocking on the door. They put a couple off the crossbar before that young lady, Ali Montoya, finally found a way through off a picture perfect ball. And Montoya with the goal in the 38th minute. One nil. Stanford leading Penn State. Halftime coming up in a moment. We're going to talk football. Pac-12 Women's Soccer is brought to you by Clean Simple Eats. Eat clean, keep it simple, get results. Stanford and Penn State looking for an early statement result here tonight. 12th ranked Cardinal leading the 8th ranked Nittany Lions 1-0. We begin the second half. Troy Clarity, glad that you are here with us, whether you're watching on the West Coast or staying up late with us back east. Ali Montoya, the goal in the 38th minute so far, the decider in this one. And it, for the most part, has been all Stanford. Penn State's highly vaunted attack has been smothered to this point. While Stanford, after banging a couple off the crossbar, finally found a way through, thanks to Montoya, in the 38th minute. But that is only the half of it. The chess match continue, especially between two fantastic coaches and programs such as these. Stanford looking to go 6-1 and one all time against Penn State. Blocked by Doms. Out of bounds, Penn State to throw it in, Maddie Myers. Penn State with just one shot, none on goal in the first 45 plus minutes. Give away, Kostmeyer. Kostmeyer had it taken away from her, but able to get it out to Kitahada. Trying to get it back to Kostmeyer and does. Kostmeyer finding Ike. Well, she might give it a one timer, Doms. Slides it out to Wesley. And then back across. Bouncing. And out of bounds. Goal kick coming up for Penn State. Penn State 3-0-1 on the season. They've won three consecutive matches. And they're staying out here in the Bay Area as they've got one against Santa Clara coming up on Sunday. Just down the road, about 10 miles or so from us here on the farm. Santa Clara one and three on the season, but they've played a brutal schedule to start. But that's what that's what Jerry Smith and the Broncos do. Stanford three and zero on the season. Both of these teams picked to win their respective conferences in each of their preseason polls. Penn State in the Big Ten. Stanford in the Pac-12. Ike. Doms. Doms. Blocked. Stanford keeps it. Centered. The miss hit rolls back to Asman. 
has been able to bail out Penn State in that instance. That was almost a, a grievous mistake by Jillian Jennings, the grad transfer from Boston College. Boy, that's been a, a neat pipeline. Boston College to State College, Pennsylvania. Mentioned Sam Coffey. And now Jillian Jennings. Sized up by Myers, won by Wesley. Off of Myers. Kennedy Wesley says, I got it. I'll handle this, this throw in. Kostmeyer has to redirect. Too late. Catherine Asman, five saves so far in this one. There's a lot of new things about this Stanford team. A lot of new players. We've already seen a bunch of them here tonight. A new assistant coach as Marguerite Alzasa is now the head coach at UCLA. Alzasa, a former assistant for Stanford, now running the show in Westwood. So Melissa Charlo, now on Paul Radcliffe's staff. She began at, at North Carolina, won the College Cup there, and transferred to Penn State and was a captain there. So she's watching this one with interest as Evans Dumps that one out of the side, and the corner kick coming up for Penn State. Penn State with just one shot in 49 plus minutes. They only had one shot in the entirety of their match against Stanford in the third round of the 2019 NCAA tournament. From Wiesner. Left foot. Bending in the mixer. Evans says back off, falls out of bounds, goal kick. Well, this is a, a big night around Pac-12 women's soccer. Pay particular attention to those results for USC and UCLA. USC beating number six TCU 3-0 earlier tonight. And number three UCLA beats Duke in Durham. 2-1 the final there. So far, so good for the Pac-12 here in this one. But the Penn State Nittany Lions trying to change that aim towards Schlegel. Taking away Brandt, I believe, stepped to the four in that instance. Headed out and out of bounds. So a, a, lot of, a lot of new things for Stanford this year. And of course, Madison Haley's moved on. Naomi Gurma's moved on, too. And I asked... Paul Radcliffe, what he thinks the major differences are from the 2021 squad to this team. And he said, look, we're, we're on the younger side, but we also have more depth. There are two or pl three players at each position that I trust and feel confident in. And that's certainly proven out as the early season has gone along. A whistle against the Cardinal, and Penn State will have the, have the free kick. Meanwhile, I asked Erica Dombeck, I mean, look, you've – you know, Stanford is not an unfamiliar opponent. You guys have faced each other a few times over the last seven-plus years or so. I asked her, what are the similarities and differences between this Stanford squad compared to others that she's had to bump up against? And she said, look, I mean, Stanford still understands the game. They know how to, how to work with one another. They're so well organized. But she also said the big difference is we don't have to bump into Katarina Macario anymore. I think a lot of coaches around college soccer have been saying that over the last couple years. Thank goodness she's gone. Boy, what a player she was. And still is. Just on a different level. Wesley. Kitahata. With Ike pointing the way. Stepping over. Back to Wesley. Chipped by Kostmeyer. Scheiman sends it forward. Yeah. 
Kostmeyer. Off the chest trap, but gets whistled for the foul. Schlegel. Back to Campbell. So new players, a new coach on staff for Stanford, and Paul Radcliffe says, hey, you know, change can be pretty good sometimes. A lot of people are afraid of change. Swiped away Wiesner working hard. Ike yes. couldn't get there in time. Wiesner rolls it out far side, sprinting. One on one. Center, but well off target. That will be Hawking to take the corner. Towards the front, and a big bump. Get pretty physical out there. Wiesner sends it the other way, trying to shield, but sprinting in and giving it a poke, but well wide of the net. Stanford defender maybe thought she had a bit more time than she actually had. But out of nowhere came Penelope Hawking, who has terrorized teams all around college soccer throughout her brilliant career. USC's all-time leading scorer, Graduated from USC last year. Just wanted something different. Had some more eligibility left. Had a few more, had one more year in her eligibility bank. Decided to do something a bit different. And Erica Dombach said, wait, what? She's in the portal? Okay. Come on down. And Erica says Penelope has, has brought everything to this program. Fire, competitive skill. Doms sizing things up. Doms goes to ground. Falls to Montoya. Score! <laughs> Alley again. <laughs> Two nil Cardinal. <laughs> and Montoya becomes the fourth different Stanford player this year to score two goals in a game. But Doms was just waiting and sizing things up. She actually took a crack at this later than I thought she might. And when she did, it went off the foot of Ellie Wheeler and rolled right to Montoya, who has the second goal of the game and her career tonight. The miss hit. Fall, falls to Schlegel. I believe Hawking tried to center it, and now Schlegel in the mixer. Stanford tried to get it out of there. A shot off of Evans, and another corner coming up for Penn State as the Nittany Lions try to strike quickly. Schlegel and Hawking just causing havoc inside the 18, as they, they usually do. Cardinal up 2-0, but nowhere near out of the woods yet. Towards the penalty spot. Going back out of the 18, settled. Off of two heads and into Campbell's hands. Boy, Cardinal just able to recover it. Penn State from getting into the back of the net very, very quickly after conceding the second goal of the match. Doms gets whistled and says, what? Are you kidding me? And you get the sense 
that if Penn State can find a way through here in the next couple of minutes, this is going to be a whole different game. So potentially critical stretch of ball unfolding right before our very eyes. The look from behind the net. Wiesner taking the free kick. Left foot, sails, Wesley gets it out of there. And then Engie finishes it off. Penn State now with three shots on the evening. One save credited to Campbell. Ike survives the bump. Doms wriggles loose. Wesley in the air and falling down in the 18. Jasmine Ike with the close call but lost her footing. Any contact there between her and the defender clearly incidental. Schlegel, the closest blue shirt to that one. Myers throwing it into Schlegel. Hawking. Big tackle. Myers in the air. Campbell goes up and gets it. And snatches it away from Kate Wiesner. Campbell 5 foot 11, Wiesner 5 foot 7. Boy, and the pace and the tempo of this match is, has really picked up particularly in the last five minutes or so. Penn State throwing it in. Schlegel. Leaves it for a teammate. And that one didn't have a chance. Other scores around the conference. These games are in progress. That's Texas on top of Oregon, 1-0. Oregon State leading Boise State, 2-0. Everyone scoreless in the second half. Beautiful night for soccer. A lot of fans here in the building at Kagan. Schlegel towards Hawking, handled by Evans. Kitahata on the move. Myers. Outstanding stuff. I believe that was Leontini who got in there. Amy Sayer in the match. Along with Leontini, replacing Ike and Kostmeyer, respectively. As we have hit the 60 minute mark here on the farm. One of the more anticipated early season matchups in the season. Ahead to Wiesner. Shielded off well. Kennedy Wesley with a terrific play. But Hawking just relentless. Has the super competitive fire and she admitted certainly earlier in her career, even on the collegiate level, certainly in high school, she let her fire get the better of her too many times. Which is in complete contrast, apparently, to her off-field personality. Pretty laid back, pretty chill, and pretty easy going off the field. But when she steps on that pitch, everything turns around. 
in the air towards Schlegel, the header, no. It's one of the better looks that Penn State has had so far tonight, and one of the better chances for the Nittany Lions. Grubel back on the pitch. Samantha Williams back in as well. Grubel replacing Kitahata. Amy Sayer came in earlier, a few minutes ago. Scheiman with Sayer right there to meet her. Scheiman from Germany, Sayer from Australia. Schlegel from Parker, Colorado. Great ball to Penelope Hawking, point blank save, and a recovery by the Cardinal. Campbell started it, Rubenstein finished it. Holy smoke, what a play. What a fantastic defensive sequence. Heck of a pass by Schlegel, too. Picture perfect. And then Campbell absorbed it. And then Rubenstein able to knock it away. That was well played all the way around. By far the, the biggest test for Stanford defensively. Williams. Outside. It's Doms. Waits. Doms left foot. Back post. Overcooked. Grubel close, but that ball way too tall for anyone. Doms just lurks. And, and this is usually right around the point in the match where Doms really starts to assert herself on the attacking side. And starts to put things in the back of the net. I'd love to see a, a breakdown of when Doms' goals have come during the course of games. Now I'd venture to think that that most, if not many, of her goals in her Stanford career have come between the 60th and the 75th minute. There's the whistle. Rubel versus Myers. And Myers with a, a bit of a yank, but then Grubel going right to ground. So probably a smart move by Grubel. Feeling the tug at the back of her shirt. Maddie Myers wants a bit more clarification on that ruling. From Grubel. High in the air. Bounces close to Leontini, but out of bounds for a goal kick. Well, there's Maya Doms. First team all Pac-12 last year and certainly in the mix to do big things again this year. In fact, she is on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list amongst a host of other Pac-12 players. Lauren Brisky, who came up big for UCLA against Duke earlier today. Micaiah Minnis for Washington State. Nicole Douglas, the prolific goal scorer for Arizona State. Summer Yates, terrific attacker for the Huskies. Giveaway, Doms ahead. Grubel gets there, the center, Williams, lets it bounce. Headed around, and finally taken out of the 18. That was perhaps a bit more interesting than it needed to be. <laughs> Wesley aiming for Doms. Poked out of bounds, Stanford to throw it in. So certainly no shortage of talent once again in what promises to be another gauntlet in the Pac-12, man. It's tough. Goal kick. So many terrific teams. UCLA, of course, figures to be in the mix. 
I wouldn't count out Washington State either. Todd Schulenberger and that crew. Underestimate the Washington State Cougars at your own peril. If there's one thing I've learned in nine seasons now of called Pac-12 soccer on this network, it's that you underestimate the Cougs at your own risk. Campbell collects it. Cal, a very talented team. Leontini gets it back. Shyman hounded by Leontini. And she gets it to Doms. Doms gives it to a teammate. Williams swept out of bounds from behind. Corey Dyke saved a goal. And it's ruled to be off of Stanford. Boy, that was setting up to potentially be Stanford's third tally of the night. But watch the work by Leontini. Didn't give up on the play. Hung on to it. Found Doms. And Williams. Had a chance at it, but Dyke snuffed it out before that became a real problem for Penn State. Hyatt bumps into a couple of white shirts and tries another way forward. Jennings. Wasserman on the far side. Evans with Schlegel lurking. Watch this run from Williams. Williams stops on the dime. Left foot, not enough on it. Well, that's a lot to handle with Williams running at top speed, trying to fight off a defender and trying to figure out a way to uncork a shot. And she just rolled over the top of it. Pressure. Shimmy Shake from Canif before she gives it up. Canif gets it back. Too much. Stanford to throw it in. Paul Ratcliffe, the Brain Trust, looking on. Assistant Melissa Charlo. We told you about her earlier, the Penn State alum. Paul Hart as well. And a lot of Jocelyn down there. Penn State gets called for the foul. So Stanford with the free kick. Close to Grubel. Knocked out of bounds. Out wide to Rubenstein. Beyond Sayre. Asman. Holding her palms out as if to say, hey, give me some options here. <laughs> Bounces off of Campbell. Keeps it at her feet for a moment before some slight pressure from Ellie Wheeler. Campbell, the starting keeper for the Cardinal. Of course, that role had been handled 
the last couple of years by, by Katie Meyer. Of course, we lost Katie Meyer, passed away six months to the day. And her legacy on this program will, will live forever. I asked Paul Radcliffe about it, and he said it's pretty simple. Passion. Such a competitive spirit and passion for soccer and for life. So her spirit will always be with us. Made us the best when she was here. No one will ever forget the national championship game, the penalty kicks against North Carolina, standing tall. That one is in the air towards Doms, trying to size it up and get a foot on it. Sweeping in, sending it over the top and out of the park. So a goal kick coming up for Penn State. A look at the road ahead for Stanford. It literally is a road next weekend. They'll head to Chicagoland at Northwestern and then at DePaul. First, a meeting with Cal Poly coming up on Sunday. And then Pac-12 opener, September 23rd at USC. That could be very intriguing. USC with the new head coach. Wiesner. Nobody home except Campbell. So certainly Stanford mental health a bit much more of an emphasis across all the programs. It's certainly an event that, that hit Stanford athletics very, very hard. And mental health so important, so critical. Williams left foot right to Asman. Well, how many Stanford players can strike from long distance? We've seen Leontini, we've seen Kostmeyer, and now we see Samantha Williams. He says, all right, from 25 yards out, let me give this a crack. Bang, good strike, right to Asma. Grubel, Doms, Doms, poked away. <laughs> and now Stanford's starting to get the close calls after Penn State had been knocking on the door through the early portion of the second half. And Doms, after another fantastic ball, I feel like I sound like a broken record, but a terrific ball giving a Stanford player a chance. That time it was Doms. Towards Schlegel. Williams. Doms his room. Doms his speed. Doms didn't have options. But now she finds a little help out to Wesley. Leontini into the corner. Centered towards Sayer. No. Well, as we come up on 15 minutes remaining in this one, and with substitutions for both teams, a reminder that a big rule change for men's co for women's college soccer and men's college soccer as well, as there is no more overtime. And in the postseason, golden goals are a thing of the past as well. Regular season games end in ties after 90 minutes. In the NCAA tournament, they'll play both overtime periods, lasting 10 minutes each. And then, if necessary, after that, going to a penalty kick shootout. So that's, that's a big, big rule change. And it's on both the men's and the women's sides. Schlegel. Wesley, well done. I asked both Erica Dombach and Paul Radcliffe for their reaction to that 
rule change as Wesley a little bit slow getting back up, but now she's back to her feet. Erica said, look, the college season just doesn't make physiological sense for 18 and 20 year old players. So she's in favor of it. She says next year, I don't even think we're going to be talking about it. And she also admitted that, hey, the fact that there's no more overtime might be a bit of a blessing for us this weekend because they play Santa Clara on Sunday. That's the Broncos' only game this weekend. So their legs will be fresher, it would appear, for this one than it would be for, for Penn State. So maybe that might not be as much of an issue if there had been overtime still for this year. Paul Ratcliffe feels decidedly different. We'll tell you more about that after this free kick. High in the air, there's Schlegel, poked away, Campbell. Campbell swats it out of bounds. And another big save by Ryan Campbell. Boy, good service. I believe that was Wheeler. As we take another look from behind the goal, off Wheeler's head. Campbell able to reach out and swat it away. Corner kick. Front post, Wesley. Sends it into the Penn State bench area. Caniff turning and perhaps trying to get things going quickly. Before she finally waits. Cleared out by the Cardinal. So Erica Dombach in favor of the elimination of overtime and golden goals in college soccer this year. Paul Ratcliffe feels very, very differently. He even admitted that he voted to keep it. And he pointed out as Schlegel gets ahead on that one. Kenneth trying to get there. And a handball called on Leontini. So let's, let's hold the phone and table that discussion for, for another moment here. Ratcliffe saying, really? That's a handball? <laughs> also maybe lobbying for perhaps maybe a, a separate foul here. <laughs> Knocked out. That's a little room. Back in the air, Campbell gets it. Schlegel hits the deck. Campbell wins the battle. Boy, Ryan Campbell, good on crosses, reads things well, good decision making. All three of those things have been paramount, especially here in the second half. Giveaway off of Evans' foot. But now she's finally able to clear it. Engi clears it out. So Paul Radcliffe says, look, the thing about ties is that, look, we need to decide these games and make it easier for the selection committee to find the right teams to advance. That's a terrific point. Because if you're getting all these ties, it makes it a bit more difficult to figure out which teams are truly worthy of making it into the NCAA tournament. Amelia White back in the match. Doesn't quite get enough on that one. And nobody asked me, but that's pretty much where I stand on it, too. You're making it a bit more difficult, potentially, on the selection committee. You know, nothing generally bad happens when you win games. Why not give teams as many opportunities to win as you possibly can? Within reason, obviously. Also, as a play-by-play -play announcer, golden goals are good for the real. Doms. Trying to hang on to it. And gets taken down. Uh, she and Shiman got locked up. Inside 10 minutes to go. Stanford on top of Penn State 2-0. A brace by Ali Montoya, the freshman. 
One in the 38th minute, and another in the 56th minute. And look, I, I clearly get that, you know, the college soccer season is just a real, mar it's, it's a marathon and a sprint at the same time, if that makes sense. You're, you're trying to run 26.2 miles, it seems, and, and doing it at, at light speed. But I understand player safety. I understand that conversation. But I also think it's, it's better served. and it, it increases the drama as well. Nothing wrong with drama. Schlegel. As Leontini tried to clear it, but it was redirected off of Schlegel with the hard carom out of bounds. Stanford to throw it in. But that's the rule. That's the law. Let's see how it affects things going forward. Ike. Leontini. Wesley. Kitahada. Back to Wesley. Now back to Brandt. Ends up with Schlegel. Squeezing it ahead white with Campbell off her line. Smothered again. Campbell in the right spot once more. Leontini got a foot on that one. Rubenstein finally sends it out of harm's way. Ryan Campbell, half a half. Holy smokes. Here's her latest work of art. Fantastic ball. Schlegel finding Amelia White and White doing the right thing. But Campbell getting about six fingertips on that one. Big, big saves for the junior from Laguna Beach. Bit of a spill. It goes back to Asman. Kate Wiesner back in the match, replacing Jordan Canner. Less than seven minutes to go. And Penelope Hawking back in as well. When you need goals, you turn to Hawking. And Penn State certainly in that situation right now. Intercepted by Hawking. Hawking working. But chipped out of there. Campbell shielding Hawking off the ball. And Hawking tries to make the case that Campbell touched it on the ball's way out. No dice. Hawking's twin sister, Ileana, in her fifth year at the University of Arizona. So the Hawking's still maintaining that direct tie with the Pac-12. And a tumble taken by Devin Olive. Evans handles that. And finally completely cleared by the Cardinal. Five minutes left. White.
Nikita Hada to Kostmeyer. Weaving, waiting, has it dispossessed, trying to get it back, and then the takedown just outside the 18. With Wilson coming in to make the defensive play. Wesley, out of bounds. Well, top 10 teams are already 0-2 against Pac-12 teams tonight. With number two Duke losing to UCLA and USC beating sixth ranked TCU. Could Penn State be the third top 10 team to fall against the Pac-12 opponent today? Kitahata centering. Doesn't get past the Penn State defense there. And out of bounds. Kitahata still working. So is Wesley. Ike lets go. Caught by Asma. Three minutes left. Collected by Ellie Wheeler. Evans chips it forward. Stanford wins it back. Boy, Evans, another terrific night. Both Kostmeyer and Scheiman go down in a heap. In Hawking's direction, but Brandt was able to get there first. Scramble towards the corner. Rubenstein taken back by Penn State. Redirected. Less than two minutes to go. Wiesner, back to Wilson. And on a hop, Campbell gets it. With Schlegel not far behind. Boy, that young lady has played lights out, especially in the second half. Didn't face any shots on goal in the first half, but has risen to the challenge here in the second with five saves. Three of them of the point playing variety. Ike sprinting down the far side, and she still has it. And she's taken down. Cassie Hyatt with the foul. Hyatt transferred from Texas Tech. She's a fifth year senior from Parker, Colorado. She was actually club teammates with former Stanford striker Sophia Smith. Final minute of play. Stanford and Penn State. The heater towards the front post is handled by the Nittany Lions. Two terrific programs. Teams that know what it's like to be holding and hoisting the big trophy at the very end of it all. Stanford's done it twice in the last five years. Penn State did it in 2015. Big tests for both squads here tonight. But Stanford is the one that's going to get the result here this evening. Two, nine, eight, seven. Six, Final seconds five, ticking off here at Kagan. Three, and two, this one 
is in the books. Ali Montoya in the 38th minute and again in the 56th minute. The freshman comes through with the brace and Stanford gets a big win here in the early season over a top 10 opponent. The final score here on the farm, 12th ranked Stanford two, eighth ranked Penn State nil. Nittany Lions fall to 3-1-1 one one on the season. They'll head down the road to face Santa Clara on Sunday while Stanford goes up to 4-0 on the season. They'll face Cal Poly right here on the Pac-12 Network on Sunday afternoon. Aren't you glad you watched this one? It was fun. On behalf of our Pac-12 Network crew, I'm Troy Clarity. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight, where once again, the 12th-ranked Stanford Cardinal beat the 8th-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions 2-0. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and back the pack.